Hey guys, today I want to talk a bit about the big latest update on RStudio Pro, which is version 3.0. Since Procreate 5x came out a while ago and stole the show, this one went quite under my radar as well. But RStudio was an app I really like, so I'd like to give a tour to this new revamped version. Let's get started. If you use RStudio before this version, well, you might be quite surprised because the layout of the interface changed quite a bit and it resembles a lot more to Procreate now, actually. On the top left, you'll have your usual drop-down menu that you would have in standard programs like Photoshop and you can be accustomed to. One thing to note is that this window will not go away when you draw. Usually, on most programs, it will auto-hide, auto but not on this one. It will only hide or show when you toggle it on back and forth on the icon. The next one is the Open Documents window. You can have multiple open documents at the same time and switch between them. So, let's show you right now. Let's open another one. And you can see here we have two open documents. I can switch between one or the other. And I can also close one with a left swipe. And lastly, this icon is used to toggle on or off your ability to draw with your finger. If it's on pencil only mode, your fingers will only be able to use shortcuts, resize, etc. but not draw. If it's in pencil and finger mode, well you can also draw with your finger. I usually keep this on uh, pencil only mode so I can avoid any uh, accidental um, strokes with my fingers while painting. In the middle we have the usual toolbar and the last icon is the one will, which will show you all the tools available. You can also edit the menu that uh, will show the tools above. You can remove some tools and you can also drag them around to change their order up above. And the last menu on the top right is the brush, color and layer panels. These panels can be dragged around and resized to fit however you want to work. The brushes in this new version take advantage of an upgraded brush engine and they were apparently built back up from scratch. You can see next to their icon of the brush which tool it is associated with. Like for example here in this category. When you select a brush it will auto select the, the watercolor brush. And when you select another brush it will automatically ch change the tool for you. I find this way of working really cool because you can just create a new tab with your favorite brushes and just switch between them without needing to select another tool and go back to searching for the appropriate brush for that specific tool. For example, let's say you like this one, you can just add it in your presets and have multiple presets of the brushes you like just at your disposal. I'll make a more detailed video only on the brush engine and its capabilities once I have more time with it to test it more in depth and dive into the deeper settings. But just from now I feel a huge improvement in these brushes and I think RStudio as well as Procreate have a better brush engine than what I could do on the desktop with a program like Clip Studio or Photoshop. It's entirely subjective, but the feeling of painting on these apps, even on an iPad screen, is more enjoyable to me than a traditional drawing tablet on desktop. The color panel has a lot of different layout options, but truthfully I just only use the color palettes and the classic square with the color slider around it. The layer panel is also the same as before, nothing really significant here, just your normal panel with the buttons at the bottom to add new layers, duplicate, group, merge. You also have layer effects, which are really cool. They work the same way as in Photoshop, where you can edit them afterwards. And 
adjustment layers. This is really cool and it's what separates our studio from Procreate for me. Because you can, for example, add a gradient map, which was only recently added in Procreate. And here it is an adjustment layer, you can go back in and change the gradient however you like. It doesn't matter, it, it won't be applied to your image as a filter. And at last on the left we have the sliders to adjust the size and opacity or flow of your selected brush. These are pretty self-explanatory. On the same tab you can also uh, change it right here to have access to your color swatch menu. And this is editable in the view menu. Right here. So you can have swatches or sliders depending on what you want. You also have at the bottom the usual basic settings for the selected brush, if that's what you need. Uh, but for each brushes you have more detailed settings when you click on the brush itself. A lot more settings actually. So that's it for me. I'm gonna do a lot more in-depth tutorial about the brushes on this app and see what I can come up with, but I'm gonna need a bit more time to get really familiar with them first. If you liked this video, please leave a like down below, it really helps, or a comment, anything, any engagement. If you want to see more of, the, of these videos, you can sub. And in the meantime, keep creating, guys, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.